Over the past years, I've gotten many, many comments and questions about how I create my videos, so I'm going to make a few videos to show how everything is done. I'm doing this to satisfy everyone's curiosity and to share my methods so that others can give it a try on their own to make some visualizations that I might never get around to doing. In this video, I'll show you how I sync up video elements with gameplay footage like you see in these examples. The programs I use on my end are BizHawk and After Effects, but it's possible to get this kind of workflow on other programs. BizHawk runs the game and has a built-in Lua scripting engine which allows it to run custom code while the game is running to collect information about what is going on. And After Effects is good for interpreting the data output by the Lua script and combining it with the captured video footage of the game. The first step is to record the video footage that shows off the particular event or characteristic I want. At this point, I'll just record an emulator movie. That way I can use save states during the recording to make sure I get exactly what I want to show. Having an emulator movie is also good so that I can go back and extract even more data from the same video if I forget something at first. If I just made a video recording, I wouldn't be able to poke around in the memory more than once. In this example, I'm just going to have the sprite ID and sprite slot number hovering over each sprite. I try to make the video eye-catching, like I could just have Toad stand still here and you could see the Shy Guys walk by, but that's kind of boring. Maybe I can show off how these logs are actually sprites, and how the sprites are spawned when you pick things off the ground. And then for good measure, I can go in this door just to show how everything unloads and new sprites are loaded during a room transition. That's enough for now. Next step is to get a list of all the game variables I need to make the video work the way I want. For this video, I need the sprite's ID and slot number. Chances are, all of the sprite's IDs are stored in a table in memory, in order of slot number. So I'll need to find the memory address that holds all of the sprite IDs. And then, in order to get these values to stick to the sprites on the video, I'll need each sprite's X and Y positions relative to the screen. The position of sprite's position on the screen is directly driven by OAM, but I happen to know that oftentimes OAM values are hard to read from because of the way that some developers implement sprite flickering when they're on top of one another. This is done by shuffling the OAM entries every frame, so an object can be in a different memory location every frame, which is quite annoying. An easier way to go about it is just to grab the position of the sprite relative to the level and the position of the camera relative to the level, then subtracting the two. Those two values are usually stored in a static place in memory. So for this video, I'll need the X and Y position of each sprite which is probably stored in a table similar to the IDs. And I'll also need the X and Y position of the camera, which shouldn't be too hard to find either. Once I have a list of all the values I need, I'll go in with a memory viewer and find where they're all located in memory. Maybe I'll make an entire video focused on searching for memory addresses, but for now let's just fast forward through this step. Here are the memory addresses for everything. The slot numbers are just 0 through 9, not stored in a table. And for this example, the camera never actually moves up and down, so we only need its X position. Now that I have all the memory addresses for everything, it's time to actually extract the data from the emulator. I've written a general purpose Lua script for extracting data from the game's memory and outputting it into a CSV format that is recognized by After Effects. I just have to fill in a couple of tables with the memory addresses I found and how to organize them into readable numbers. For example, it will automatically create 16-bit signed 2D point data out of the position values even though the high and low bytes are not even contiguous. You can find a copy of this script in the description of this video if you'd like to use it yourself. To run it, I'll just open up the Lua console in the emulator, select the script, and then play back the movie I just recorded. And at the same time, I'll go ahead and encode a video file for the movie as well. In order to create this video at an acceptable quality, I always encode using the AVI uncompressed method. It makes a pretty large file, but it lets me scale it up in After Effects, and it still looks nice and sharp. Once the movie is done playing, I'll have my video file, and also a CSV file that contains the screen and sprite data for every frame of the movie. Now for the fun part of putting everything together in After Effects. I'll make a new composition at 1920 by 1080 and 60 frames per second and import the encoded video. Drag it onto the timeline, scale it up, and set nearest neighbor interpolation. I'll make a new null object and label it raw data. This layer will hold all of the data for us. To transfer everything over, I'll quickly open up the CSV file with notepad, select all of the text, and copy it to the clipboard. Then back in After Effects, I'll select the null layer and hit paste. 
After Effects will automatically convert everything into keyframes. One last thing to do to this data is to make sure the interpolation mode is set to hold instead of linear since these values change discreetly. Now to create the text objects that will move around this video. There are 10 sprite slots, so there will be 10 text layers. I'll set one of them up and then copy and paste it to speed things up a bit. I'll parent the text layer to the emulator movie layer so that it takes on its coordinate space so that 0 is the left edge of the video and 256 is the right edge. I'll set the text content of the layer to be the sprite ID data we imported. This one will be slot 0 and I'll have to update this for each of the layers. Same goes for the position. I'll link this layer's position to be the position data of sprite slot 0 that was imported and subtract the screen's position. Copy and paste this layer 9 times and make sure to update all of the links to point to the correct sprite slot data. And there we go. Now all of the data follows the sprites on the video. There are a few things that would help clean this up a bit. First, if you had a keen eye, you might notice that the text sort of swings around the sprites instead of latching onto them exactly. This is because it takes a frame for visuals to update on screen usually, so to fix this, I just move the video forward in time by one frame. Now the text actually follows the sprites exactly. The second thing I would do is mask away all of the text that falls off of the video. It's cool to see how the sprites still move a bit when they're off screen, but it can be distracting sometimes. In order to do this, I'll select the video, text, and null object layers and pre-compose them, which is sort of like filing all of the layers into a separate folder. I'll copy and paste the video layer and put it on top of the pre-comp and add an alpha mat to the pre-comp layer. This will mask away everything that is outside the bounds of the video. The final thing I would do is remove the text when a sprite despawns on its own. In this video, the 1-up, the pow, the bomb, and the heart despawn when they're on the screen, and their properties stay on the screen until another sprite takes its empty slot. I could do this manually, but in some cases that would also be a lot of work. Just to show it off, I'll go ahead and find another memory address that corresponds to the sprite's status and add it to the raw data layer. Going back to the emulator, I just have to update the Lua script with the new addresses and run the emulator movie again and I can scrape additional data out of the game. This is why I create an emulator input movie, so I can run the same inputs as many times as I need, like in this case. Without that, I wouldn't be able to scrape data from that exact playthrough. I'll go ahead and run the script and generate another CSV file. Copy and paste this data in and I have more keyframes to work with. The easiest way to do this would be to have the sprite's statuses link with the text object's opacity. If the sprite status is a dead or despawned state, I can lower the opacity to zero so it disappears. I'll write a short expression for each text layer's opacity that will set it to zero if the sprite status is zero, otherwise it'll say at 100%. And there we go. That's about all of the technical parts of this. I could tinker around with the styling a bit and maybe improve the positioning of the text around the sprites, but that is all detail work. Here is the final result of this example. In this one, I used the data to have text follow sprites, but the possibilities are really endless with this sort of power. Hopefully this video was useful. I'll be releasing at least a couple more videos like this one that answer a lot of the questions I get, as well as some work in progress videos that show how the main videos on this channel are created. Thanks for watching.